Okay, good morning everybody. It's Sunday the 23rd of February and here we are in the coach on site at Fimber Holt, which is going to be the visitor centre. And this is our first video for a little while. I did have uh, some more to upload to our YouTube page actually, but uh, my phone memory got wiped before I could put them on unfortunately. <laughs> so this is the first one for a while. And we have here uh, one of our volunteers, Alan. Hi, Hi Alan. Uh, Alan's just going to give us a very brief uh, tour around the coach to uh, give you an idea of what work's been going on and, uh, and what's changed since the last time we did one of these videos. So over to you, Alan. Okay, well, um, unfortunately I haven't seen the first video, so I'm not sure of the differences between then and now. But the major, probably the major difference is that the coach is looking much brighter, having been not completely finished painting, but this end of it is, is not far off. Brian's been doing a great job of trying to get this uh, this ancient timber to accept some paint and not show a bit through. But the big story really is with these doors. If, James, if you could show this door behind you here. Yeah. This is the kind of thing we've had to, to cope with. You'll see that the um, a piece of wood like that has completely gone. And we've had to replace that. Um, so basically there's a big... Big gap. big gap, you yeah. see there. And if you have a quick look at the next door along that way, you'll see the sort of condition that the doors were in before we started to replace the timber and make them look like, like this. So the doors wouldn't open. The windows wouldn't open, just now open fine. Um, you can see how we have replaced all the rotten timber with new stuff and replaced the door seals which were completely rotted away. So we now have a very good uh, seal on the doors. See that door was was much sounder than that one, so we only have to clean that and paint it, and uh, it's looking much better. Absolutely. Um, and then the same's been done with the same's the, done the, with that door. This door over here as well. Yeah. And then the timbers down here have all been replaced as well because they were. Yeah, in. these side pink, these pieces here. Base, um, basically, you had water getting in through yeah. the, from the window frames and making Did these all rotten. Rotted, so. Yeah. And, uh, so the next one to really tackle is that one, which is in a much, much worse condition than they were. Um, Ed's had a go at that, but it needs two of us to spend at least a day on it. Excellent. Um, try and bring it up to scratch. And I was um, talking to um, Paul and Connor outside a moment ago nice. about the electrical work nice. that they've been doing. Yeah. So we they can see... Unfortunately, that bezel got broken when it was taken down, so we're short of one. We need to try and source one from somewhere. But just to show you what that looks like, that's uh, this fitting here. Yeah. And they've all been very well cleaned up and, and uh, reinstalled. Yeah. Uh, the uh, vents have been taken off, cleaned, painted and put back. And if you see the ones in the north end of the coach, you'll see the, the differences. It's like literally black and white they were so filthy well, we'll have a look at that in a moment and also uh, something else that Connor and Paul have been doing is cleaning up the, the fittings that go inside those oh, yeah. and we can see here this is what they look like now they're much they're very shiny and clean and they were I'm reliably told in an absolute foul state when, when they were taken out so covered in soot and rust um, nice. So it's a fantastic job. Little things that people don't really see, but are yeah. extremely important. Little box up here, perhaps needs to tweak a little bit because the doors not sliding very well. But well, that's for the electric. Uh, what's going in there, Connor? Fuse box. Fuse box is going to go in there to tidy up all the electrics. Excellent. That's something that wasn't there before. That's something we created. So we're going through to the north end of the site. The south end we've just been in is going to be the initial exhibition space and visitor centre itself. This is the north end, which is uh, mostly being used for storage, but will eventually become part of the yeah. visitor centre as well. And you can see the condition of those vents and light bezels and things. It's really That's already been... Somebody's painted around that without taking it off, but 
it really needs, uh, well we might get away with just scraping that and painting it in situ. So yeah, you can see so the difference that a bit of a clean up makes. So that's a, a, yeah. a very quick whistle stop tour of what's been going on in the, the coach. Um, as I say, all these little things that uh, actually are quite labour intensive jobs and um, are, you know, to the untrained eye appear really cosmetic, but they're absolutely vital in making sure that uh, the coach is watertight and sound and able for, for visitors yeah. to come along. So To finish the doors off, we need to take off the metal fittings and uh, strip them down, repaint them and put them back on. Um, and we're also going to be putting um, these metal fittings across the windows that, that don't have them um, as well, or something similar. Um, and again, that's uh, obviously for security. So we can see those metal bars aren't currently on this one, for example. Um, and uh, because they are authentic, they were on the windows when the coach was in use. Um, we're very happy to put those back on. And it does add some security as well. So uh, thank you very much for that, Alan, and uh, that's been very interesting. And uh, I'm going to give you a quick tour around the site now, uh, just to bring you up to date. Right. Just before I uh, head outside to show you the rest of the site, uh, we mentioned uh, how much cleaning work has gone on on these light fittings and vents and so on. Uh, Connor's just brought us some uncleaned versions to show what the difference is. And you can see uh, that paint colour, which isn't the most attractive. and. Uh, the dust coming off there. Thank you, Alan. And then inside, uh, that's uh, pretty foul. So, um, so yeah. Though, once that's back in place, that's something that no one will see. It does still require a lot of work to get it cleaned and, and safe uh, for use as, a, as an electrical fitting once again. Okay, so here we are outside the coach now. Uh, you can see it's turning into a lovely sunny day. I thought I'd give you just a quick whistle stop tour of the external area of the site just to show you what's changed. So first of all we have this uh, new set of steps which provides uh, much easier access to the coach for our volunteers uh, making it much easier to uh, take cups of tea up and down. You might have just seen Alan leaving the coach with a cup of tea. Hugely important. Uh, obviously that's a temporary solution until we get the platform in place. The platform obviously will enable the public to access the site. But in the meantime those steps are really important for us. Here's the locomotive, if you haven't seen that before. Uh, that's Eddie, we think it's called Eddie. It's certainly called Eddie at some point in its life. Here's our site manager Keith. Just arriving on site to start work for the day. Now one thing you might notice from previous videos is that there is no longer massive pile of road planings here on the site. That's now all been spread out, giving us a much more level, tidy site, which is good for car parking. It gives us a lot more flexibility when it comes to landscaping. And speaking of landscaping, uh, you'll probably know if you're familiar with the site or if you've seen on the videos, we've got this, uh, this roadside boundary, which has got quite a lot of trees in it, but there are quite a lot of gaps between those trees and uh, we want to plant these up with uh, more trees and, and, and a hedge and we're very pleased to say that we've been successful in applying for a pack of trees from the Woodland Trust who have a project where they donate tree packs to community organisations, voluntary organisations like ourselves and uh, they're going to arrive on site in the next few weeks and we're going to plant blackthorn and hawthorn along here to create a new hedge and then we also have a number of other tree species, native British tree species, which we'll plant on other parts of the site. And that's uh, for two reasons. One, uh, for security, especially on the hedge side, it gives us an added layer of security, making it a bit more difficult for people to gain unauthorised access to the site. But also uh, for aesthetic and environmental reasons, we uh, said on our initial planning application that we would landscape the area to help screen the site to some extent and the trees will be helpful with that. It's good for obviously the local wildlife. And we're hoping
hoping to um, put trees in on a, certainly a significant part of this area here. Uh, I'm meeting Keith, who you just saw arriving in the van uh, this morning to plan out what we're doing with the trees. Obviously the final say uh, is with Sledmere Estates, they're the owners of the land, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll be getting some trees in. And if you want to help us with planting those trees or with anything else on site, uh, visit our website yorkshirewoldsrailway.org.uk and you can keep up to date with progress, visit the discussion forum. If you remember you can access the members only area and you'll find out all the details of what kind of work is going on week by week and we'd be very happy, we're always happy to invite, uh, involve new volunteers in what we're doing on site. So I'll leave it there for today and thank you for watching and uh, hopefully we'll have another video, give you another update soon.